in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In order to celebrate this Paschal mystery of love, let us acknowledge our faults and failures. For those moments, we have doubted the presence of the Lord in our lives. For those moments, we have gone through the pain and sorrow, doubting the very existence of God in our lives. Let us be sorry for these moments and ask God's pardon and forgiveness. Let us all now with a true contrite heart together say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and what I have failed to do, through my faults, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary and her Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with the Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
that the other disciples also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear people of God, I wish to bring before you the Easter blessing from the risen Lord Jesus Christ. What a tragic experience that must have been when Mary and the other disciples went to the tomb early in the morning to pay tribute to our Lord's sacred body. But they did not find him there. Initially, they might have had the feelings of sadness, pain and doubt, which might have changed into joy and excitement after encountering the resurrected Christ. All the three readings of the day have focused on the Lord's resurrection and its effect. Easter, through the empty tomb, becomes the greatest and the most important feast for us in the church. If had Jesus Christ not risen from the dead, the church would not be existing today. The church would not be an exciting one today. Without the resurrection, Jesus would have remained forever a good person who had met a tragic end. People would have remembered some of his teachings and a handful of people might have tried to live according to them. But Jesus did rise from the dead and all the words that he spoke, deeds that he performed and promises he made to us is true. The resurrection of Christ is not simply an event that took place long ago. It is an event that continues even today, here and now, when we patiently work with the Lord through the trials and sufferings of life, with hope and trust in His power to do all good things. Evil always loses when we remain steadfast in our hope in the risen Lord. Dear friends, to celebrate this Easter and to experience this empty tomb is to believe once more that God constantly breaks into our personal life, breaks into our histories, challenging our ideas, beliefs, those fixed ways of thinking and acting that end up destroying us. Therefore, 
we need to let our weaknesses be anointed by this experience of Jesus Christ. We need to let our faith be revived. We need our short-sightedness be challenged and renewed. Remember, we are not alone. He is with us in our every moments of our lives, in our sadness, in our pain, in our doubt, in our hopeless and helpless situation. To celebrate this Easter is to allow Jesus to triumph over our craven fear that very often attacks us from every size and tries to bring and bury us every kind of hope. Therefore, let us allow this Jesus, risen Jesus, to live in us and to triumph over all our weaknesses. May we experience this Christ in our life every day. Amen. Let us all now stand for the baptismal promises. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may walk with Him in newness of life. And so, now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism, by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? Creator of heaven and earth, I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and everlasting life, I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins. Keep us by this grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen.
Let us now have the prayers of the faithful. Dearly beloved brothers and sisters, let us place our needs before God our Father, rejoicing because Christ has triumphed over death and entered into glory. For the Holy Father, Pope Francis, that, like St. Peter, he may continue to lead the Church in witnessing to the joyful truth of the Resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have dedicated their lives to God, that they may look for the things that are in heaven, and be Christ's witnesses in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those unjustly deprived of their freedom, that they may draw fresh hope of freedom from the mystery of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the family of God, gathered here in Easter joy, that we may bear witness to the risen Christ and reflect him in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, you know our prayers. For our sick, bereaved, and those affected by the coronavirus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, you know our prayers. For those who have died, that they may rise to eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Almighty Father, your beloved Son has risen from the dead, as he promised us. In peace and joy, we present our prayers to you, through the same risen Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Exultant with paschal blindness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to take part in this meal of love. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to your close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Hallelujah.